Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the judgiest place on the internet. My name is Josh. My name is Rick. And my name is Eric. Christian? <laughs> and we you broke are... my brain. And we are. Wait, the... look at me. You have stuff in your teeth. You do have stuff in your teeth. I just thought you had bad dental hygiene. This is so embarrassing. The only time it's ever happened. Let me see. Spinach, yeah? No, still there. Fuck. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the... Is that re-recording? Interesting. It wasn't me. I'm not the bad guy. Your phone does do it, though. And welcome back to the judgiest place on the internet. My name is Josh. My name is Rick. And my name is Christian. And we are... The, the Judgy. Back in wetter than ever. Oh. My hair is not dry from yeah, the shower. Yeah, that's... Okay. Mm, that's Can I shit. say something? Please. As long as it wasn't as awful as what you just said. This first 12-ish days of autumn have been very, very fall-like. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's the most fall fall I've had in a long time. Right? Yeah. Like, we've had really decent weather. That's because like, neither of you guys are depressed anymore. You guys both quit your jobs and you aren't depressed, so. Maybe. You don't know. So the world just kind of looks a little brighter to both of you. That's possible. You don't know if I'm depressed or not. I ask you like every three days how you're doing. <laughs> he does. I'm not depressed. <laughs> well, how are we doing then? How are we depressed? Is that the new? <laughs> it's shit. Fall's just been all right for me. Okay. Does it feel very fall though? Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, it yeah. does feel very fall. Why is that unfortunate? We like because fall. Because I'm right. Because Josh is right. And I was giving him the floor and now I'm kind of giving him a boring next topic please we got mail p.o box 58 out of illinois 61350 this one is to christian erica and josh too yeah i see you didn't write in josh too but it was implied yeah no no they didn't write and josh too whatever it's implied it was heavily implied they really wanted to be just to the judges oh my goodness that's really cool it's a handmade card handmade says hey guys hello hello i wanted to write you guys a letter for the longest time and now i finally got access to the materials to do so a pen, pen and paper, paper. <laughs> and stamp an envelope actually it's, is it quite expensive to mail mail bro 58 cents for a stamp is insane not if you use our sponsor com. com. get it's your stamps on it's the same price Fuck. We're gonna have to really they just mail them to you yeah i don't know get out of here like you don't have to wait in line at the post office. We're mm. going to bleep all of this. It's anyway. staying in, but it's getting bleeped. Yeah, stamps are a federally like, set price. That makes sense. That's good. Anyway, hopefully you guys get to read this on the pod, too. We are. Anyways, <laughs> I'm Sam, and I binged all of your episodes back in 2021 and religiously listen every Monday. I'm currently in the hospital for my eating disorder. <clears throat> Bro. Uh, and you guys have really helped made me feel less alone. They supply uh, they supply iPads and headphones under surveillance, so I get really lucky to be able to listen every week. It's under surveillance. That way they make sure they don't eat them. You guys are hilarious, and I actually laugh when I listen. Congrats to Eric and Christian. It's Erica. Whoa, you know no way they said Eric. They're yeah. rushing. On the baby, by the way. P.S. Sorry, it's not a card from the store rehab prevents you from having a lot of things like pens, strings, and hoodies. I hope you, uh, I hope my own take on a decoration, a decorative card works just as well. And she drew a little picture. The little picture is very cute. So very cute. we're at, we, it now makes sense why they couldn't get a hold of yeah. the material. Yeah. You're the bad guy now. Do you guys feel now. like assholes now? You also. You're the bad guy now. <laughs> but we've had this for a minute. This was, this was sent in July. Oh, wow. So. Sorry. I hope you're doing better. I hope you're doing better. Fight the good now. fight. But we're here for you, and I'm I'm glad that you're enjoying the episodes. And here's another package. This is from loyal Discord user Teo, the Lord, the Lord Master Ooh, of the Discord. Lord Master. Oh, oh my goodness! Are you fucking Hot diggity me? dang? Obvious Teo, fucking Lord Dump, fucking Teo. So it's a postcard. It says, congratulations on baby Olsen. Thank you. I know it's a bit early, but here are some books signed by my uncle for O. If nothing else, they'll help Christian with his literacy. 
Love, Teo. P.S. The dorky dad hat is for Joshua because he's a dorky uncle. Oh! Okay. Yo! That's about to go so hard. He's going to wear this all the time. Go! I love it. Is this a Northwestern logo? Yeah. Are they red? Or is this Look Nebraska? This. I don't know. Maybe Nebraska. I thought Northwestern was purple. I think you're right. And I think it is like... So, Teo on a stream a while ago uh, just randomly lore dumped that his uncle was, was a famous it? auteur and Christian called him on his bullshit and Teo fucking backed it up. Teo dunked on me. So, in this, Teo is in these books, one of the illustrations, or maybe it's not these books. It's the Christmas one. But he's in one of the books, like one of the illustrations of the kid running butt naked down the street is uh, Teo. Is, yeah, is based Inspired on a picture of Teo. Fucking Teo and his fucking lore, you beautiful little. This is so fucker. cool. It's very cool. If you're ever in the the streams, Teo's always in there dropping knowledge. What are the titles of the books uh, for the listeners? And he just has the deepest lore. Uh, it's O David. You if if you Google O David by David Sh- uh, Shannon, you'll recognize it from your childhood. No David. David smells. And the final one. Oops. Oops, all Davids. No, it's just that oops. Hmm. A, di- a diaper David book. That's How a prequel. freaking cool. For all you that aren't in the know, that's a prequel. Oh, did we mention that they're signed by the author? Insane. That's so cool. Thank you, Teo. Fuck, fucking Teo, you fucker. You... He's living a fucking... A fucking... Uh, 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 the, 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 a main character life, and we're all just fucking NPCs in his world, and it fucking sucks. And speaking of fucking things that suck. fucking suck, we don't just get mail on this podcast and get cool hats. We also can, can I say something about your cool hat right now? Yeah, with the headphones on it, it makes you look like Mother Gosling in a good way or Mother Goose, I should say. A hot way, like I look like I could. Like you, I, it looks like you're wearing a bonnet. It looks like I could raise Ryan. Yeah, we okay. don't just make you jokes live in a about, boot. Where is the other one of these? Uh, it's been on the side. Oh, it's underneath. Underneath. This episode's chaos, guys. And guess who has to fucking edit it's it? It's been driving me insane. You know what else drives me insane is when we go online and find silly little stories <laughs> to judge people and laugh at them. And sometimes Christian is the one doing that. Yay! But not this week. <laughs> ah, it's what? still me. It's still me. This one comes from R slash. Am I the asshole? <laughs> Thank you. And was curated by r slash best of Redditor updates. Okay. Am I the asshole for yeah. not wanting my parents to adopt my ex fiance? Oh my god. Huh. <laughs> the drama. What? My twenty four female, ex fiance twenty four male, and I were together for seven years. He proposed last fall, and we mutually decided to break up in May. He. He's always gotten along incredibly well with my parents, especially my father. They always treat him like he was one of their own children, and my parents have always told him that he's part of the family. For example, he started coming to my f- on my family vacations with us when we were just 17. It was a very tough decision to end our relationship, but we both agreed it was for the best. He moved out while I finished my last term, or finished our lease term. Mm. His plans fell through at the last minute, and he had to move in with my parents for a little bit while finding a new place. That's awkward. Super awkward. Obviously, I felt a little weird about him moving into my childhood bedroom and being at my parents' house. Yeah. (laughs) And it led to a lot of awkward interactions between us, but we eventually got past it. He moved out at the start of August, and I thought that was it. But last night, my parents invited me over for dinner. They sat me down, and they explained that since the wedding was off, and my ex fiance wasn't going to be part of the family by marriage, they wanted to adopt him. Why? <laughs> like what what like what are the benefits of an adoption past eighteen? I don't think that they can't be legally adopting, right? They just want to keep him around? I think I you think, can't legally adopt a, an adult. I think in the Kale, same, let us know. I think you and this is me purely speculating. Like legally I think you should be able to just only for the matters of like same reasons for marriage of like getting into a hospital room with them yeah. or like passing stuff down through an estate. Like I just think potentially that might be why you might be able to like legally adopt a, but an you adult. Can make, make them like a power of power, attorney. Yeah. 
attorney. But like, if they die suddenly and they don't have a will, and or like if they're in the hospital and they don't have. But if you're gonna go through the legal, I'm just guessing. I have no idea. I'm just saying, like, if if you're gonna go through the legal like steps of adopting an adult it would be less of a hassle to just make them your power of attorney or put them in your will. Yeah, but it means a little something. What if you want to give them your last name? Now it's like, oh, this is a loophole. It only costs As... $50 to adopt them. It's $150 <laughs> to change your last name. The, I feel like it's the opposite. It's more expensive to adopt. Tail Adoption is expensive. Yeah. Adoption is very expensive. Do you think it still costs 50 Gs to adopt a 29-year-old with a job? Probably. Yeah. Hmm. Unfortunately, that's, that's why like there's 24. so many 29 year olds orphans. <laughs> it's really sad, actually. It's not that sad. They're 29 at this point. I'd still, I mean, I would say 29 if my parents died. I'd still be really sad about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. My parents asked him last week, and he agreed as long as I was okay with it, which I'm definitely not. Yeah. yeah, that's a fair response. Yep. I told them that I'm not comfortable with that at all. And then they started telling me that I'm keeping them away from their son. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And that I need to tell him that I'm okay with it so that we can all be a real family. I'm worried that I'm being an asshole because they have cared so much for my ex over these years. I'm also worried that I'm being selfish by worrying about how to explain this to my future partners. So am I the asshole? No, that's super fucking awkward. I So I googled, can you adopt uh, adults? It is mainly for like um, passing stuff down uh, for inheritance rights and or filiation, which filiation is a legal term for the recognized legal status of relationships, so like emergency okay. situations. But then I remember, I, this made me remember a... I want to say it was a Chad Chad video about legal adoption. Yes. Um, and that it's is like, so creepy. it's like creepy oh. old dudes wanting to adopt like a 25 year old girl, but like they got to be hot. Yeah. And it's very, very For surreal. For what reason? Oh, you know. To why. watch them walk around their house, but not do anything. It's fucking insane. If you have, is it Chad Chad that made it that is video? Chad Chad. Hey, Chad Chad, if you see this, <laughs> for the love of God, reach out to us. We'll probably have to reach out to you. We're a little bit smaller. We kind of need you to come to us rather than you come. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so fucking weird. Why, why, why would his, why would the parents get mad at her about it? I don't yeah. Know. The fact that I don't like. I don't like it because they dated and now you want to make them make them siblings like that's uncomfy. I'm upset. I don't like it. I didn't even think about that. We well, I say we I make this point a lot in a lot of stories we get in here where I'm like, oh, maybe they're just really cool. How cool mm -hmm. is this fucking ex fiance that the parents are like, we need him in our life still. Yeah, because like in kind of like we've been dancing to saying the whole time, like. You can just still be friends with the guy. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to adopt him legally. Unless the person left out a ton of... Well, we have updates. There is an update, uh, and there's a little bit more detail. I was saying, unless that. the person left out a ton of detail where, like, this guy's home life was completely broken, they've been raising him for a super long time, so, like, it's already been the familial thing, and then, like, that yeah. stuff, or, like... And maybe the circumstances around the breakup were, like... I don't know. It's just... It, I, uh, so here's some information that they had in the comments from the first post. I do have a younger brother, but he's off at university in another country, and he doesn't get to visit home very often. So are they trying to re replace him? Well, that's shitty to the brother then. <laughs> yeah. You're and out. Date your sister. <laughs> 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 Maybe we'll like you more. <laughs> and then my ex's mom passed when he was young, and his dad remarried and is now much more invested in his new family. But, but I'm... I'm very surprised that my ex agreed to this, but we haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. I wonder if this is like, because like they said that the dad remarried and is now, like at what point, it's like if, if you're 24, like, I don't know, I guess tough, tough titties, is that the phrase? Mm -hmm. Like if it, now if the dad remarried and he was like three and was neglected his whole life and his mom was dead then like again if this family was really and you know supportive of him it just seems so extra yeah and not necessary and he's definitely only saying yes to be like well i guess we'll have to spend more time around each other sarah yeah. <laughs> wait you see it anyone <laughs> 
Oh, sorry. He sounds a lot cooler than that. Hey, sir, <coughs> I guess we'll have to spend more time around each other. Now, that's the voice of the guy I want around <laughs> me. I don't really care. Okay. I do want him <laughs> at my house. I'm going to go smoke outside. I'm adopting you right now. I'm cutting the filters off. I buy the filters and then cut them off. You're on the top of the will. I don't know how a will works. You're on the top <laughs> You're of on it. You're on the top of it. Top means most will. Yeah. It does. I'm struggling over here, guys. My, my, glasses were, rocks. my glasses were hurting my head and with the headphones and now I got my hairs in my ears and it's it's a whole thing. Erica, Erica you don't even have to read today. Why'd you need glasses? <laughs> oh. Erica, do you need the hat? No, I look terrible in hats. This is this is your way of saying I need the hat. You think I look good right now? Is that what you're... Thank you for the compliment. You're like a mother goose that lives in a boot. <laughs> Old lady lives in a shoe. Old the goose lives in a boot. <laughs> <laughs> Teo, tell him. Here's the update from two weeks later. After I've had some time to process the whole situation and read all the comments you guys wrote, I was feeling a lot less crazy and I decided to call my ex and ask him about the whole situation. Like a couple of you guys guessed, he didn't actually want to be adopted, and he only answered like that because he didn't want to say no to my parents, who have done so much for him over the le- mm, over the years. I don't buy that. He knew that I wouldn't like this si- situation and would say no. Obviously, I'm not thrilled about him offloading the hard answers onto me, but I feel like we had a really productive conversation about it. That's almost worse. He's literally yeah. such a like little like I don't want to upset your parents so you do the fucking heart. And now I see why they broke up. <laughs> what an insane like no, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Can you do it? You're their daughter. Fuck that shit. That's worse than like him trying to weasel his way back into the relationship. <laughs> mm-hmm. I also gave my brother 20 a call because there were some suggestions that my parents were trying to replace their son with my ex. He said he didn't want to talk about it over the phone and would rather wait until he could come see me in person. This wasn't at all like him, so we had to work out a way for him to visit me over the weekend. Well, she came out to me as trans during this visit, and I have a sister now. Oh, no. That's exciting. That means the parents are transphobic. Probably. Oh, Oh. no. (laughs) Oh, no. We talked for a few hours, and she decided to go to university in a different country because she wanted to have a better opportunity to restart as a woman. She was planning on waiting longer to tell us because she was being hypercritical of how she will how well she passes and didn't want me and my parents to just see her as a man in a dress i think she passes uh really well and i'm very proud of her editor's note uh passing does not mean that you are better at being trans you don't need to pass but it's cool if you want to and do she ended up coming out to my parents at the beginning of this this semester because she was going to change her preferred name in the school system and my parents have access to some parts of this so that they can help her with tuition and such she asked them not to tell anyone else so that she could come out to people when she felt ready absolutely she thought they took the news very well until this situation broke out her therapist has suggested that our parents are going through grief for having their son the insanity of wanting to adopt my ex could totally be a part of this. Yeah. That makes sense. My sister gave me permission to tell all of this to my ex fiance, and together we all agreed it's best for all of us to go low contact with them for the time being. Wow. To go low contact with the parents? Uh, no, with the sister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just says for us to go low contact. It's got to be with the parents. Yeah. Okay. And then there's just a little TLDR, but you don't Wow. Know. So they're definitely. So this that's is from pissed. Turf Island. This is from the UK. Yeah, that's crazy. What Good a for them. what an insane twist. Yeah, didn't see that coming. It explains everything. It really does. Yeah, I still find it weird that the ex fiance couldn't like fucking be a grown ass adult yeah. and handle his own situation. Yeah, he's not bit. off the hook. Hey. Conver- having conversations is hard. Communicating is real difficult. <laughs> Especially yeah. when you're living on their couch. <laughs> you know, that's, you know what? Hang on. That makes a lot more. What are you supposed to be like? No. And then, oh, well, then you're out next fucking week. But <laughs> that's fair. That's a fair assessment of it. 
Well, it would be make them shitty parents, too. Yeah. I think they already did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know true. if there's much redeeming qualities of these parents. That's true. That's really fucked to be what like, a, oh, man. What an insane story. Wow. Love so, that. Hey, sometimes life's stranger than fiction, you know? Well, you're trying to become an auteur yourself? Yeah. Hey, Teo, get me in touch with your uncle. Oh, man. I can only write kids' books. Hot D spoilers. You guys cut up on Hot D? No, not Sundays. There's a line in it. It's just one line, and it hits so fucking hard. It was from Lord Corliss, and he said, history doesn't remember blood. They remember names. Oh, it was so good. It like brought back like peak Game of Thrones shit. Hell yeah. And like on the subreddit, somebody was like, that was a really good line. And they're like, yeah, that, that was a line straight taken from the book. That's why it was good. It was like, no huh, way. How about that? <laughs> that fucking G. R R R R R Martin. That J or G? You know what I said. And you know what I said. <laughs> you can Christian get a clean G right here so you can transpose it? G. <laughs> R slash relationships. My 28 fiance, 28 male, is abroad and just told me he has no desire to come home. <laughs> Wait, hold on. 28 female. Female and fiance, 28 male. Okay. Has no desire to come home. Are they on vacation? They're my, abroad. My fiance is traveling abroad and just told me oh. he does not want to come home. We are both 28 and have been together for eight years now and Whoa. engaged for almost <laughs> one. God. Damn. You really hope that it's like we've been dating for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Things aren't that serious between us. Eight years. We are planning our wedding and life together, and we even have a cat. And over the last few years, I've noticed that my fiance was struggling more and more with this restlessness and boredom with life overall. Nothing seems to make it better. Job changes, lifestyle changes, being more active, reading more, camping, traveling. All of it. I myself suffer from anxiety and have a past with depression and have suggested he try counseling so he can learn to manage his feelings and what figure out what triggers these bouts of restlessness. Restlessness. It's a mouthful for me. It is. Recently, we went abroad for a friend's wedding and had a fantastic trip. I came back a week early because I had already used up all my leave while he has more, so he used an extra week to visit another country. We just got off the phone where he admitted that he's depressed, bored, and re restless again and doesn't want to come home at all. This scares me a bit as this is something he said earlier in the year as well after a few weeks of traveling. I just don't know how to handle this anymore. I love him and I want to be supportive, but I'm also scared that me and our life that we've built is just not going to satisfy him anymore. So he's not saying I want to break up necessarily. Yeah. It's either you learn to travel, hey, you get over your <laughs> issues and travel with me, or uh, I'm going to keep traveling solo, I guess. Yeah, you got to break up, right? I mean... I mean, that's in incompatible lifestyles. Extremely incompatible lifestyles. Yeah. I mean, you could do the whole go on a break thing, and then he's just going to have sex with somebody in Prague, and then... Yeah. He's going to... All of a sudden, he's starting to stay at hostels a lot more often, and we all know where that goes. I think you got to break up and then say if, hey, if it's meant to be, you know, I don't yeah. th like that's an insane like, like, like she's mentioned, it's been a long running like trend she's seen. Like he's going to be happier going out and doing shit and you're going to be happier not worrying about him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. How do you guys, I mean, I don't feel the way of like, I want to leave my whole life behind, but do you guys ever like go on a trip somewhere and like. Maybe I should just move here. Every time. Yes. Yeah. Partially because we live in Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I go anywhere that's like not just corn, I'm like, what yeah. is this? It's literally me, Jack Skellington esque, when he goes into Christmas land. I've never seen that movie, so you're. I reference. just watched it last you're night. Out. It goes over my head. And he goes, what's this? What's this? There's snowflakes in the air. And then he repeats, what's this? What's this? There's presents do, do, everywhere. Do, 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 do. It's very Come good. On. Okay. You're going to get canceled for never seeing that yeah, before fucked. Christmas. <laughs> That's a, like, I know you're not a musical and not necessarily a big Disney person, but you are going to get lambasted for never seeing Nightmare Before Christmas. Sorry. We're fucked. I've seen Beetlejuice. 
Same thing. Same thing. You know yeah, it's actually yeah. the same, same exact plot, movie. Mm-hmm. Similar amount of singing. Mm-hmm. Um, the opening, one of the opening songs, and I think it might be. Mm, I don't know if it's the opening song, but they just go like something, something Tennessee, and it's like that's weird. It's weird that you're just like, hey, we this is in America. Like they're like this exists in the same world that America exists yeah. in, and we're gonna specifically I, let you know by name dropping Tennessee. I don't places. like that either. <laughs> Does Jack say it? I think so. Oh, yeah. Fuck me, no. <laughs> it's Tennessee one thing Jack. if Sandy Claus says it, that makes sense. But for Jack to say it, get out of here. How cool of a place did this guy have to go to to want to break up with his girlfriend of eight years? That's what I'm saying. Like. Was it Prague? Everybody love white people love going to Prague. I don't know where Prague is. Portugal? No. Is that a Prague? I think it's Eastern Europe. I think it's like Czech Republic esque. Oh. Or Czechoslovak. I I still don't know which one is which, but Yeah, I think Prague is like over in that block of the thing. I'll tell you. Because it's all like Eastern European influence stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Prague is is the capital of the Czech Republic. Oh, it feels good to be right. Hey, thanks. Man. Is this your first time clicking the soundboard tonight? Sure is. Might be. Wow, that's a first. I've been so Aurora and I have been playing these little games. You just go onto TikTok and then there, you type in trivia, and there's this guy who just goes, "Let you know, let, uh, let me know what if you know, you know what this flag is," and then he just shows a flag and he goes, "That's Libya," and then he puts up the next flag and he just. Uh, I think you guys are going to get this one. It's a pretty pretty popular country. That's Ghana. <laughs> just, so, yeah, I know where Prague is now. Yeah. Because of that. Because of flags? <laughs> because of flags. Yeah. Interesting. Well, they do yeah, other things. Yeah. They say, uh, uh, can you name uh, two countries that start with the letter E? There's five of them. Ethiopia. And two of them. This one's a pretty popular country. England. I'd be surprised if you don't get it. Not England. Actually, that is one of them. There's three, though. Oh, man. It's very close Egypt. to Egypt. Yeah. Cool. There's also Ecuadorial, Equa, Equatorial Guinea and Ecuador. And I think there's one more E. There's Equatorial Guinea? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I Papa learned Ornu. shit from this TikTok account, man. They love using Equatorial Guinea. Because it's one of those weird ones. Yeah, it is a weird one. I didn't know there was three guineas. Yeah, so I don't think there's a... Because I always thought, you know, there's a new guinea. There's a papa. Isn't it papa new guinea? Isn't it all one thing? I don't think it's papa new guinea anymore. I think it's ah. just papa guinea. <laughs> I don't okay. know, man. I really hey. don't. I know there's equatorial guinea. This is the American education system where they don't teach anything about anything outside of America. They teach us how to go on a break. Mm, bye. Which will oh oh <laughs> oh shit! I thought you were gonna say no. <laughs> uh, n- here we'll fi- no. Which will go on after this next story. Oh no, we're hitting a break. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Welcome, Jack, and we're Jack. Tennessee. <laughs> We're here. We're going to circle jerge, get used to it. And circle guess what? Jerge. For this this week's circle jerge, we're doing three months of shit. Three months of shit. It's more backed up than Erica. Who wants to go squirt? I'll go first because I already have it open. I lied. My phone's locked. <laughs> Erica, I already have it open. Christian had (laughs) in July 82 poops. Okay, so that's mostly pre baby. That's mostly pre baby. Which I thought July, in my head, I was like, the poop numbers are going to be so low because baby came halfway in the month and I went down to singular poops. And then I looked back and I had anxiety shits for the the first two weeks of July. (laughs) So guess what? Your boy was pooping four to five times a day instead, instead of two to three. Okay, so what was August for you? August was 86. So the same? The same, because I went back to work and I just instantly went back to pooping all the time. Your body said, hey, 86 on the shits for a little bit, and then we're going full force. And then for uh, August, uh, September, September yep. I had 
sadly, 88 poops. <laughs> That's you're so many poops. You're trending in the wrong direction. Yeah. No, I've... <laughs> my theory of me, like, procrastinating, <laughs> procrastinating, 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 god damn it, it was right there, it was so close. I procrastinating? <laughs> yeah, yes, it's procrastinating. <laughs> I definitely do that at work. So I had 88. Erica? You have it open so you can go first. We'll edit it so you're first. July? Yeah. Nine. I don't remember. What was June like for you? Do you remember? Uh, you were. Hold I on. think you had like 11 in June, if I remember correctly. June. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hey, your boy knows Erica's shits. So, okay. So, post-baby, you think it went back down? Um. So, it took... One, two, three, four, five. It took five days after baby before, and on the sixth day. First movement. I had my first spell. Wow, five days. It was so scary. The first shit? Oh, it was so terrifying. Now, and forgive me if this is too crass, but were there still stitches in your ass? 100%. Wow. Yeah. No, they dissolved after six days. No, they did not. Are they, were they dissolving s- stitches? Yes, they were dissolving stitches, but they took like three weeks to dissolve so wow is that normal yeah okay i've only gotten one stitch you've only and had one stitch yes one That's singular so stitch weird. where yeah, the back of my head what happened i was born and then <laughs> 18 years later i got hit in the back of the head from by a handle of a scooter like you know like a razor scooter 18 huh you're 18 when it happened a little uh, too old to 17? Be, a little too old to be riding in a Razor scooter. We weren't riding them. We were throwing them up in the air uh, post-Boy Scouts meeting and trying to break them. And then a kid who I thought liked me, and I still think likes me to this day, <laughs> whipped one at the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I walked home and had blood coming out the back of my head. And my mom was like, we're going to the ER. And they gave me one stitch. And I might have been a sophomore, so I was probably like 15. I <laughs> thought he liked me. I've had so many stitches. I had 144 in my cheek. I had three above my eye, seven in my thumb, like probably 50 in my stomach for my appendix surgery, yeah, that's, that's, seven in my asshole. It's so <laughs> weird. I've never heard of somebody getting a singular stitch. Well, yeah, the the doctor literally was like, do you want me to put a stitch in it? And my mom said yes, assuming he meant like multiple. And my mom said, yeah, we already hit our deductible. Fill him up. I think, honestly, that might have been what it was. I feel like face stitches, like, maybe it's because of, like, how sensitive the tissue is. They really start multiplying. Because my brother, when he was, like, five or six, uh, hit his face. You know, like, how at playgrounds they just had, like, metal stakes out of the ground? Yeah. Yeah. And they weren't for horseshoes. They were just metal stakes sticking out of the ground. Mm -hmm. He fell and hit his face on it when he was, like, six and tore his cheek open. And he That seems like the right age to have that happen. (laughs) <laughs> 17 still seems a little too old for the razor skin. And he had like a bajillion stitches. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they must just do like spe- specifically the cheek because of all the muscles going yeah. in there. But those probably weren't dissolving, right? Back then? So um, I was attacked by a dog and the dog's tooth went like through my cheek. So I had stitches like inside my mouth. Um, and those were dissolvable. And then the ones that were on the outside were not. I had to have them rule. Judah. Ah! Oh! Um, that's crazy yep one yeah. stitch for me and it wasn't in my asshole well that's good because ass- asshole stitches are very itchy so <laughs> oh i didn't even think about that yeah now on a normal day what level of itch is your ass hole uh, depends on how long it's been since i've had a wax like when oh, my hair starts growing back so are you just like actively trying to do the things that make your asshole the itchiest because at this yeah. point it's kind of a it's kind of a pattern <laughs> What's what's it, get a tattoo on your asshole next and then we'll talk. No. Uh, so that would you, uh, would August. What do we got, Erica? Um, August, I had seven. Okay, <laughs> and then September six. <laughs> Olson really was making you shit more. Yeah. Well, now it's like I'm home alone with the baby all day. I don't have the opportunity to poop, and if I do have to poop, I have to take him in there with me. And so then he's just staring at me while I'm doing my business. That's fair. The one day I did have to do that, and we were pooping at the same time. That's really cute. That's cute. It's a nice bonding moment. Yeah. It's crazy that you've only had to do this like a handful of times, and I've already done it four. I've only pooped with him in the room with me twice. 
I've done it four times. Today. I mean... I've shit with him in the room. No, Zero you have times. not. Zero yes, times. No. You didn't let me finish. Uh, July 27, August 26, September 27. Pretty pretty normal for you. Yeah, I don't change. Is the thing. Yeah. That's so crazy how well regulated your body is. It is. It's especially crazy because July I was falling behind and then I got COVID and started shitting. No, no, no. I was way too on pace and then I got COVID and stopped shitting. Okay. Because I wasn't eating as much and didn't want to get out of bed. And then, uh, you know, it still counts as a shit, even if you pooped your bed. <laughs> no, it doesn't. These are trips to the hey, bathroom. Listen, it does say. If I had to bathroom. count the birth shits, then you have to count shit in your bed. All right. Well, it's still 27, 26, 27. But uh, September, I shit three times in one day, which is rare. And then my body, the rest of the week was like, hey, we did it, man. <laughs> take, take a couple hey. of days off. <laughs> I, I don't get you. it. I don't understand. It's not like my diet isn't. It'd be one thing if my diet was like, yeah, I wake up, I eat half a bowl of cereal with almond milk, and then I eat a banana for a snack, and then I have a granola bar and water for lunch, and then every day I eat half a steak and potatoes and green beans. I eat like dog shit different every week, and it drink sometimes, and it's just always 27, 26, or 28 shits. I don't know what is wrong with me. I'm jealous. I'm so jealous, Josh. I don't want to poop 88 times a month. <laughs> Make Hey, be the change you want to see in your life. But then sometimes I hold in my poop too long and I go, oh, my tummy hurts. Does this not happen to you guys? No. No. <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. Erica will be like, I think I have to poop. And then she'll hold it. And then it's just like, oh, it's no, it passed even, by. Oh, my God. It's not even that I'm like really holding it. It's just like, oh, I'm currently in the middle of doing something. When I'm done doing this thing, I'm I will go, go shit. But yeah. then she's like, oh, I don't have to shit anymore, and I'll be like, four yeah. more days. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't go that extreme, but like I do that to Aurora all the time, because Aurora is, of course, an IBS queen as well. And uh, I'll, we'll be doing something, and like, I'll be like, I got to shit. And she's like, oh, okay. And then like we'll get home, and then she's like, did you shit? And I was like, no, it went away. Yeah. And she's like, how? And I was like, I don't know. I'll just wait another. And it'll be the next day when I finally do shit. It's yeah, no, very rare that you just you just sort of just go. Mm -mm. Usually, if I usually if I hold in a poop for long, and like if it's yeah, if I have the urge to poop and then it's like I'm busy, I'm gonna wait a little bit. I wait two hours and now it's diarrhea, and it's like this is bad. Oh for yeah, everybody. mine's diarrhea as well. It's oh, just... not me. Oh, also, <laughs> see that's why I don't know. I don't know what my my actual issue is because I have chronic constipation, right? Because I only go. Once a week, once every 10 days, whatever. But then when I do go... It's just running and messy. It's a pile. It's just slop. Yes. Like, you know, in like prison movies where they... <laughs> <laughs> when they get food? Yeah. No. And they just have that like <laughs> ladle and they slop it out. No. That's what it's like. <laughs> I know you like your number two is extra sloppy. I don't Man. like it. It's just how it is. When your stomach's making the gurgly noise when you have to poop really bad, yeah. can only you hear that or can everybody hear everybody that? Everybody can hear it, but people are polite. I'm so glad I didn't ask this question in high school. Because it almost <laughs> sounds like a fart where it's like, yeah. and you're like, that was an internal one. Nobody could hear it. Nah, dude. I used to get those. I get those but so everybody bad. Everybody hears it, right? But that's everybody not from now. In my experience, that's not from poop. It's not from holding in poops. It's from holding in farts. I get it from both. Hmm. The worst is when you're like, like you're holding in farts, and so you're like, oh god, and then you finally are able to go and fart somewhere, and then you sit back down, and it does it again. It's like you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I let out the farts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely heard one of my coworkers have one of those the one day. Like it was clearly an internal mm -hmm. one and she's i think she knew that i could hear she's like oh i'm so hungry i'm like yeah okay hungry for farts i'm so hungry <laughs> she's like it's okay honey we all do it <laughs> i i honestly can tell you if i knew this knowledge in high school it would have crushed me oh Don't, same, yeah for sure. Absolutely. Mine, mine was the worst in college but i have to be in high school too mm -hmm. i would be sitting in like college exams and just like like, I think that's what started the, the poop frenzy for me is like, I'm going to avoid that at all costs. Hmm. And so the I just poop, poop frenzy, huh? Yeah. What else would you call it? I don't know. 
I don't bonanza? Know. You can tell the bowel movement bonanza. We haven't recorded in a long time, and we're still getting back into it because we—that's the longest we talked about poop in a long time. Yeah, we had three months to discuss. I know. I'm yeah. not saying it's a bad thing. That I'm just was saying like three circle judges worth of poop talk. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Hey, we held it up, and plus, it's still plus sloppy. Plus, we had to talk about my afterbirth shits. Yeah, so. it was all. Hey, it was all great podcasting. I'm sure nobody was eating their lunch during this, and they loved well, it. Well, you know, nobody's it, ever listening. Where did this come from? Nobody's ever listened to the podcast while eating lunch, right? I don't think so. Podcasts are famously uh, nighttime things. Also, a famous thing is listeners sending in sounds to us to play on the podcast, and here's an example. Did somebody say judges ring dong? Fuck a uh, ding dong. Ring a ding, sing this song. Judges want my um, star is in a hurry. Something, 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 something. Judges. <laughs> Magnificent. I No notes. You yeah. did it in one. You needed to do it in more than one, but that would be a note, so I'm not going to say that. You did it in one. Congratulations. I, I really enjoyed that, yeah. Do yes. we know what the cover was? No idea. Did you? No. no. Sounds familiar though, doesn't it? All they all they have written in here is Hi Judgy's big fan of the pod. Hmm. So Thanks, maybe Tara. it's from big the fan pod. of your sound. Did you say Tara? Yeah. Like from Teen Titans? Yeah. Hey, why'd you leave everyone and never come back? Yikes. Yeah. Beast Boy loves you. Beast Boy loves you. Is my phone still making I don't hear it. Good. And usually once we play that listener sound, it's followed by a listener submission. Usually, yeah. In fact, always. In fact, always. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's being so noisy, guys. This is I don't hear it. Do you hear it? Really? It, it I did can just hear it. do it. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I probably can't hear it. I can't hear as well because of the hat. Ah, your bonnet, oh. yes. Yes. My I'm name Bono. is Bono. Boo. Somebody okay. Th this doesn't need to be in the podcast. But on the episode that just launched, I you have the baby blanket. I'm like, can baby get a touch? Can, can baby? And I was like saying that, and somebody left a comment like, that baby shit was so cringe. And it's like, <laughs> that's the yeah. point. Yeah, <laughs> no fucking shit. <laughs> Do you think I unironically was like, can baby? I'm baby. Can baby have blanket? Because I was, and I'm now using it as a defense mechanism, saying that it was intentionally cringe. Christian, get on over to that listener submitted sound that usually comes after. I'm sorry. Christian, get on over to that listener submitted story that usually follows a listener submitted sound. My name is B. Hi, I'm B. 17, non binary, and have been listening for a long time. I think you guys are hilarious. Thanks. And have quite a few stories that I'd like to share, including, but not limited, limited to, my ex boyfriend shitting his pants in a public place. This may have been a high school, but I'll never tell. Uh, you should tell. I want to hear that story. Is that this story? Uh, at the time of the story, I was six and living in Minnesota. What? My mom and dad. No, it's a different story. It's a different story? Yeah. Was she dating a high schooler and she was six? No. Well, I'm sorry. Were they dating a high schooler and they were six? I don't know yet. But let's just listen. Let's just listen to the story. Insane, yeah. Erica. I know. <laughs> I'm six, living in Minnesota. My mom and dad are separated, but tried their hardest at co-parenting part of this meant compromising on holidays and my dad is a devout christian and my mom is an atheist but my dad talked her into letting me attend christmas eve sermon i don't remember a lot of it but what i but what i know is it was a big deal and the sermon was broadcasted throughout the state because of the holiday the pastor was talking about representing god or something like that <laughs> and my stomach started to hurt I started doing that farting noise where you don't know if other people hear it or not. God heard it. God always hears God it. God heard that your stomach was farting on that day. It was that familiar kind of hurt where you know something is clawing its way out, but you're not sure what. I started asking my dad if I could go to the restroom, but he insisted that it would be over soon and that I could just wait it out. My stomach troubles persisted and I felt like I was going to explode. And that's when I turned into the, that's when I tuned into the pastor, stating with such passion, "You need to represent him. You must be the fragrance of Christ." And at that very moment, 
I let out the fattest, stinkiest, loudest fart my body could possibly uh, produce. <laughs> the, you have to be the fragrance of the Lord. Fragrance? That's what they wrote. You got to be the fragrance of Christ. You have to be the flatulence of the Lord. It echoed throughout the entire building for everyone to hear, including the listeners at home. Oh, yeah. And they yes. all, including the pastor, turned and looked at me. The pastor laughed nervously and said, well, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> and this is where it fades out for me. But apparently, I stared at my dad, my eyes wide, and said, I think I need to go to the bathroom. Anyways, I'm a Satanist now and found Hell out yeah. soon after that I was lactose intolerant. But I hope that taught my dad not to force his next child to sit through a boring as hell religious thing, especially when their tummy hurts. I think that was the demons being excised from yeah. you for being in a church. I think that's what that was. I think that dads need to listen to their children when they say they have to go to the bathroom because my dad also I'll once never. wouldn't let me go to the bathroom. At a church service? No, we were driving home from somewhere and he wouldn't like stop at a gas station for me. I ended up getting a UTI. Because I held it for so long. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that happens pretty frequently, like as a parent. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it's good, but. It was like several hours. Especially as a hours. shitty yeah. parent. That's insane. Yeah. Like, I'm sure, like, I mean, kids be lying all the time, you know? Also, like, how many times, I mean, this is going to happen to us, where it's like, do you have to go to the bathroom before we leave? And they're mm -hmm. like, no. And then it's like, well, we have an hour and a half drive home. Are you sure? And they're like, no. And then it's like 15 minutes and they're like, I have to go to the bathroom. I'm like, nope. You got to teach him a lesson. You got to, you got to. You're going to smoke the whole you, pack and you're you going to piss your pants. You have to get a UTI, little lady. That's what's going to happen to you. <laughs> Insane that you remember. I guess that's a pretty formative memory as a six-year-old. Yeah. Can For you sure. imagine the power sh they felt at that moment? Yeah. I mean. To bring a whole freaking house down? To bring the whole state? House of the Lord? I love it. I love the power. I wish I could have that thunderous of a, a toot. B, if if you have that clip, since you, since you said it was like broadcasted, oh if you God. can find that clip, please send it in. Dude, that's going to go so fucking wild. I wonder how hard that is to find. It's in Minnesota? I wonder what year. Yeah. We they're 17 now, and they said they're six at the time. So 2011 Christmas. There's a chance that There's it's a chance online. that it's online. Oh, There's fuck. There's a non-zero chance. Uh, B, you got a little bit of homework to do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shit the bed on this one, B. Is that why they call it a P.U.? A P.U.? <laughs> it's because they fart in them? Ha, <laughs> ha. That's not funny. As somebody that went to uh, 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 Catholic Christian school, school. And Catholic school for a long time. Ols now Olsen goes to Christian school every day. Hey, school of the hard knocks. Hey, hey Christian school of the hard knocks. You got another story, man? Hey, hey, hey I'm just waiting for the hey, Christian school of the hard knocks. I'm not going to laugh at that, so oh. <laughs> move on. Hey, I don't need that. I don't need you guys to laugh at my jokes. I have the soundboard to tell me that I'm funny. Christian, I think you're very. I'm just gonna move on to the next story. Christian, I think you're very funny. I think you're the funniest person I know. Rude, but okay. I said I think. Well, Josh, I, I, that's what I needed to get me through this last half of the episode. R slash true off my chest. Is it? I hope you guys. I thought you were it. moving that off of your chest. And I was about to fucking laud you and applaud you. You said I'm the funniest. Erica, you're the funniest person I know. <laughs> God damn it. My husband of two weeks said that he can see himself cheating on me in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even if you think that's true, why say it? What do you gain out of that? <sighs> Peace of mind, Josh, okay? It's not bad if I warn you first. It's technically not cheating now. I want to, okay. Do they, do we get context? What's the context in which this was said? Because I need to know how stupid this man is. Before I even start with this insanity, I'd like to give a bit of context. Oh, oh. <laughs> lovely. Skip over that part. Yeah, we don't need that. Not important. We are newlyweds. We're both in our 30s and got married two weeks ago. And last night we were in 
bed having some conversations about the future, and the topic of cheating came up. He brought it up. And he said that... That's strange. He said that he could see himself cheating on me in the distant future. For I, what reason? <laughs> what, what? Not that there needs to be a reason. If we, uh, <laughs> insane to frame it as cheating. I'm just saying there's a possibility, babe. I don't know. Like... And saying that he didn't like be like, yeah, I could see like maybe moving towards a polyamorous relationship at some point. And saying that he's like, no, I'll cheat on you. I will lie and deceit you yeah. and not have you involved. And it'll be with another person and you will not be aware of it. And then I'll keep it a secret and I'll destroy our marriage. I can see <laughs> it happening. I'm not going to say no. <laughs> if an 18 year old or what was the 20 year old approaches me at a hotel bar and says, hey, you look pretty good for a 38 year old balding guy. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck him for 10 minutes. I'm gonna have cheat on you. I gasped at this. Uh, I gasped, gasped at this, though. Really thought he was just teasing me and trying to mess with me. It's not a funny joke. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny. But he told me... <laughs> he told me that to just give him some time to explain, and he said that he doesn't see cheating as something that's that bad. What the fuck? Because... <laughs> If and when he gets tempted and decides to step outside of our marriage and cheats, he would just end up missing me and want me more. Oh, my. It's such a classic dumb line. He honestly would be showing himself that no other woman can be as good as me for him. This is that guy. And then he would come to the conclusion that he only wants a stable and serious relationship with me, regardless of who he meets and is attracted to in the years to come. In other words, he wants to compare. Uh, be he wants to compare me to other women, and he wants me to be able to come to the conclusion that I'm the one for him. I'm thinking, oh God, I wish he was just joking because he has a dark sense of humor. But looking into his eyes at this moment, it really sent chills down my spine. It was, it wasn't pretty, and I felt uneasy about this. Yeah. It was an interesting view on cheating that he has, and it's that's not very... something I would expect, nor nor seen coming. That's a very generous word to describe this view. That's probably the most, if I had to take a guess, like the most baseline reason for why like people give to cheat. Yeah. It's like, well, I, it's, I, now I know more than ever that I love you. I, know, I, mean, I used to know somebody who was a serial cheater, and that's what, when he got caught, that's what he said was... I was getting it all out of my system before I married you. That way I'm not tempted later in life. And it's like, That's what an what... insane thing to do to somebody. <laughs> no, the logic totally tracks. No, see, my dad cheated on my wife and now, or my mom. And now my dad knows that he loves my mom. And so now I, like, I'm just doing like I was taught and I need to cheat on you to make sure I love you. I want a traditional relationship. I want to have an affair. <laughs> just like they did in the 50s. I don't know how to feel about this. Divorce, that's how you feel about it. Yeah, that's... He's literally telling you, hey, I'm going to ruin it later. Yeah. yeah. It ruined the mood for us, and he started calling me unreasonable. <laughs> oh, another red flag. Uh, called me unreasonable. I asked to get up to go to the bathroom, and he said no, and I got a <laughs> UTI. And that I shouldn't be that upset when he's done... He hasn't even done anything yet. <laughs> And that he's just trying to be honest, and he's giving his honest opinion on the subject. Insane. Absolutely a, insane. It's also doubly insane that he brought it up. Yes. He's like, yeah. now, now is the time to broach this. Right. <laughs> God. He's like, eh, two weeks, we're past the moment window, uh, so I'm going to cheat on you. This honeymoon phase has gone on for two weeks too long. Let me bring it to a screeching uh, stop. <laughs> That's amazing. This is one of those things where, like, hopefully the person who posted it, it's one of those things where you kind of are fortunate, like, relatively early into the thing, where it's like, hey, at least you didn't waste eight years, eight more years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, at least they're literally telling you right now, I am a bad person, leave me. Yeah. <laughs> and you can literally just be like, sweet, I'm out of here. I hope all of the comments were divorced. I hope every single one of them was divorced. How can you not? The moment that he says that, like, 
you can't trust that person anymore. No. You cannot trust him. Oh, well, you, you can trust him for a couple years. It's going to be down the road. No. <laughs> what does down no, the road mean? That li- could mean tomorrow. No, babe. Literally, there's a brothel down the road. I'm going there tonight. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, you, cannot, you can't trust him. Uh, I think we're taking a boys trip to Amsterdam. Thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Divorce. Uh, have you heard about this green light district? Insane. <laughs> Listen, I am not always. The green light is for man Go. seeking man, I believe. Oh, this feels made up. Uh, sorry. I don't remember what I was saying. I'm so sorry. It's okay. What in it? Yeah. Uh, very, 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 very just like, just break up. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was saying. I'm not always an advocate for like anytime, mm-hmm. you know, we get a story about a relationship like break up. That's not always the answer. I am. I mean, most of the time it's the answer, but. <laughs> I'm not always the one to quickly jump to like you need to leave him, but this is a 100 percent your your major yeah. red flag. You need to leave. You've him. soiled the relationship. Yeah, there's soiled no it. going back from this. You've soiled it. Soiled, soiled it. it. Yeah, even if you were completely secure in a relationship, it's gonna be so hard. Yeah, to you're not it. secure anymore. There's no. yeah, there's no going back from that either. Right. Like yeah. this person has completely destroyed every iota of trust that that they could have had. Even even the even the poster was trying to give him the benefit. I'd be like, he's got a sick sense of humor. And I was like, no, no, that's not funny. Maybe he was never joking. He said, "Babe, you look a little thick today." Yeah. Hey, oh maybe God. put down the put down the brownie. Ha ha! Just no, kidding. It's not funny. You know what? Oh my God! I didn't even pick up on that. Cause how how many dudes do you know that do that shit? Where they're like, I'm gonna say something hurtful, and then if you give me any kind of like. Like backlash, he goes. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. I was just kidding the whole time. I don't know why you're so upset about this. Yep. Hey, that hat looks stupid on you, Josh. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm just joking, Josh. It doesn't make you look like Mother Goose. I got a sick sense of humor. <laughs> I've got a sick sense that I'm seeing dead people right now. It's you two in 79 years, Erica. Get us out of here. I'm going to be so old. That's rad. Uh, hey, hey, I'm not saying when you died. You just will be dead. And you could die tomorrow. You'll still be dead 79 years from now. You got my ass. Yeah. Anyway, if you liked this episode <laughs> and you want more content from us, you can find us on Patreon. And you can join our Patreon for... $1 a month. $1 a month to get access to our Discord where there's Teo lore and other things. And you'll understand what that means if you're on our Discord. And also you can follow us on our social media platforms like Twitter and Twitch and Instagram and and TikTok and YouTube and... Oh, shit. I was like, you're not even looking. And then I was holding it backwards. And you, that's you got it. Them. You got them And all. that's at Judgy's Pod. J-U-D-G-I-E-S Pod. Or if you want to send us in a listener submission... Like a story of your own, or a submit a submit a sound that you made yourself, then you can email that to us at judgespod at gmail dot com. That's j u d g i e s pod at gmail dot com. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Goodbye. Have a wonderful week. <laughs> and we will see you next Monday. We love you so much. Goodbye. It's a Kluckner thing that fucks up the soundboard, huh? I don't ever actually pay attention to which button. Shut pushes. the fuck up, Josh. Erica, that was wonderful. ABP Quinn. Uh.